Hey guys, Matt Dog here with another video. This time we're doing the Water and Wind event using Paleozoic. Literally, this isn't saved duels. I just went in, didn't make any changes to my deck, and got six wins in a row. So I feel pretty good about where I'm at. Um, I can't say that I'm an expert Paleozoic player. You know, I'm not Joshua Schmidt. However, um, I based this deck off of lists that I saw online as well as comments that people made regarding how best to build it. And you'll see in this first duel I'm going to make some mistakes and I'm also going to learn from the process. Uh, I think it was against a Paleo deck. I'll show the deck list after this. I usually do that beforehand. Um, Alright, so reasoning. Obviously I know that they're going to be a Paleozoic player so we hit them with a level 2. Nothing super important that they hit. Oh yeah, this duel was so funny. Okay, so obviously uh, we're going to send a rollback. Um, balance of Judgment is really cool. Basically, the um, number of cards that your opponent has compared to you, and then you draw the difference. It's a way to even things out. Paleozoic decks often have really long games, as this duel is clearly going to show. I just crash and evenly match instead of um, hitting them with the Harpy's Feather Duster. We get more value this way. They're going to be drawing two cards every turn, because just like us, they also got Time Tearing Morganite, which basically is like permanent double summon, permanent double draw. Here you see I was trying to banish the one card they had, but I didn't realize that uh, Dinomiscus only targets face-up cards. So, alright, let's try that again. Rebuild it. Um, we're using the Rodin Toten package. Um, this uh, XYZ card lets us activate our traps directly from the hand. You can see I'm basically just cycling through a bunch of my cards, being like, okay, so what does this do? What does that do? This card would have sent his face down card to the grave in order to grab a Paleozoic trap, so that's why he's forced to activate now. He uses Fiend Comedian, a classic card. Um, I trap trick into Paleozoic Leonchilla so I could put my rollback back afterwards. They try to feed Comedian again, they call it wrong again, but that's still good. They got multiple copies of transaction rollback. And they're going to start getting Paleozoics back every time we activate a trap card. <laughs> Just pick a third one. <laughs> Let's put, um, oh, I forgot that I put a rollback back, so I meant to recycle a rollback, but instead uh, I recycle some random Paleo card. So not the best duel, but you're seeing like a lot of the weird plays that are possible, and it's obviously a mirror match. Okay, so now they're going to try to banish one of my cards. All right, roll back. Again, Feed Comedian. <laughs> Maybe it would be a good idea to put Feed Comedian in this deck, but uh, whatever. I called it wrong again, so they mill out even more. Uh, they finally have an Elemental Burst in the grave, though. All right, roll back. They copy Elemental Burst. Uh, for some reason, I didn't see what they were doing, so I thought that they were trying to copy um, the Comedian again, so it forced out my um, rollback early, but instead they blew up all my cards. Definitely a learning process. We've both got Time Tearing Morganite going. Okay, he sets Dragon Maid Tidying, which allows him to banish Special Summon a Dragon Maid. He actually has two Dragon Maids in the grave, so we're just going to banish both of them. We have a Harpy's Feather Duster, but he doesn't have enough cards for it to be worth it. He probably will next turn, though. Alright, another Duke Frog. <laughs> he only has a thousand life points, so this actually might work. Um, Magical Hats, if he tries to attack me while I have a monster, I could flip it over and set like a couple rollbacks or something. He does know not to attack me, though, so maybe he knew it was a Magical Hats. That's weird why he didn't attack. Whatever, still destroy all his face down cards. At this point, we're playing the long game, right? Like, he caught Fiend Comedian wrong three times in a row, like, and he's drawing two cards per turn. So I'm not activating any trap cards, I'm not letting you summon a bunch of Paleozoic monsters so you can link summon an XYZ summon. I'm just gonna deck you out. <laughs> we still have 32 cards in our deck, but that's because we aren't running Fiend Comedian. Okay, try to mill out a couple. Let's see if we get any more rollbacks. Nope, just another one we made. Whatever. But yeah, we're just gonna let him uh, draw again. I think he just surrenders here. Yeah, he just there's nothing he can do to get over us. A lot of mistakes, but you see that there's a lot of fun plays that are possible. Obviously, Paleozoics go into the rollback strategy more so than our deck did. Let me just go over what his deck looked like. Okay, so he's running the Deep Sea Diva package and the Laundry Dragon Bay package instead. Um, 
That makes sense. It's basically a way to get a bunch of level twos out so you can make all of your XYZs. I have one copy of this. Like, it seems fine to make it so it's really easy to one turn kill your opponent, but I don't know if three is necessary. Uh, obviously, you have to have World Sea Dragon's Latus, that's always important. Armored Kappa um, cannot be destroyed by battle, so it's basically another way to do Wadaku. Um, yeah, all right, obviously I'll do a deck list later, but this is definitely an interesting deck. I think overall I'm happier with mine. That said, I think uh, where's Fiend Comedian in here? Yeah, I could probably replace a couple cards of Fiend Comedian. I think it's solid. Okay, next duel. What have we got? Versus Fluanderies. Uh, this is a Master 1 player. Yeah, in the festivals, you don't know who you're going to go up against. You could go up against a Master 1 player, or a Diamond 4 player. Uh, anywhere. I think I saw some Royal Rares in that Fluanderies collection, too. Alright, going second. Obviously, any deck that can abuse Reasoning, Thrust, and Grass to mill Transaction Rollback and Evenly is going to be amazing going second. But let's see how what we get off of Reasoning. He called level 4. Big mistake. Okay, we get um, a Rollback. Okay, we lost Grass. That's too bad. We get a Karma Cannon. That's great. Gorilla. Okay, Swap Frog. So we're actually running the Swap Frog package in this. They flip us upside down, but we still get a chance to uh, summon out a card by activating a trap from our hand. And we activated it from an elemental burst from our hand, which is fantastic. We have a Spell Trap Destroy and a Trap Trick into anything, as well as obviously Rollback. Ooh, they banish that. Luckily, our XYZ materials come back. We're just going to let him banish Elemental Burst. We have ways of getting it back. Okay, so they're popping off. They're obviously going to go into Ryza, which is going to try to put some of my cards back. We're going to Trap Trick, and we're going to use the Rollback before we lose it. <laughs> we could just use, we just copy Marilla and send another Rollback. And here we actually grab Leon Chilla. We're going to take the um, Elemental Burst City Banish and put it back in our grave. And we also get to summon out another Paleo. So now we're really starting to pop off. I'm starting to understand the deck a little bit more. Okay. Go in attack mode. Uh, obviously, we can't make Zeus because it's the wind and water event. Um, here we do get to banish, but it was more an excuse to discard our rollback. All right. Anemone can somehow dupe frog. Um, Ronin Toten is the big one. It banishes all those toads to keep summoning out. Um, yeah, you could also summon Swap Frog back to your hand and just normal summon it again if you summon from the grave. Here I accidentally made the Water Charmer, but he didn't have any water monsters in his grave. So that was a little bit of a waste, but we do go into the Great Bubble Reef, who gains a ton of attack, uh, especially based on number of monsters that you summon or monsters that get banished. Uh, so it's a great way to actually kill your opponent. That is one downside, and it can draw your cards every um, standby phase. That is one downside that I see to Paleos compared to Elvich, is it feels a lot harder to kill your opponent, like to do battle damage. But um, Marinsa's Barrier Reef is one way. So we're going to use Elemental Burst before we lose it. It does mean it's going to be harder for them to um, Tribute Summon now, because they've already used three of their summons, I believe. Okay. Yep, add everything to your hand, go ahead. We are going to use Wabaku, and we can actually summon an attack mode because we're not afraid of getting attacked. It makes it so that other monsters can be destroyed by battle, or they can even do battle damage to us. You'll see that's a really big thing in this deck. Ooh, yeah, the drawing cards is also huge. Get rid of that. And a reasoning. Okay, that didn't really get us any value. Yeah, I probably shouldn't be summoning this in attack mode. We're not making Zeus, it doesn't matter. Okay, we get our Elemental Burst. They banished Elemental Burst twice now. Nope, sorry, goodbye. Alright, Ronin Toten's coming out, and they just surrender. <laughs> yeah, so I personally, I prefer this uh, Swap Frog package to the Deep Sea Diva package that that other duelist was using. Okay, next up, uh, just one duel versus... Um, what the heck is this? Uh, probably something I'm going to beat with evenly matched. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, because Ash Blossom is a fire and Max C is an earth, um, those aren't in this um, cup, which makes it a lot easier to resolve a lot of cards like grass. 
Oh yeah, I think um, I just resolve grass that they immediately surrender. <laughs> like we didn't even have very good cards. Like balance of judgment would have gotten us some draws, but we basically had no interruptions for their turn. But uh, you know, sometimes the threat is stronger than the execution. Okay, duel number four versus ooh, buzzsaw shark. This is like ice jades, right? Abyss shark. Um, title dragon rulers. Okay. Um, okay, it's some sort of a fish deck. Yeah, I guess I didn't really look too carefully at the ban list. I assumed that Ice Jades would be a lot bigger in this event, but uh, I guess I haven't been seeing them personally. Okay, what have we got? Another going second game. Yeah, I didn't build this deck to go second on purpose, but any deck that can abuse the things that we can uh, is definitely going to be able to pop off. Okay, Buzzsaw Shark. Most of the time, whenever I saw see Right Hand Shark and Buzzsaw Shark, I think that they're going to make... Um, Crooked Cook, but I don't think that's a water. Also, remember when, um, what's it, the Toad that has like an Omni negated a steel was legal? And they would make it using Bahamut Shark. Man, imagine how powerful that would be in this event. Okay. So they're. Man, I don't know how combo players keep up with all this. Okay, so this card I remember, it um, turns um, one of these. Okay, hold on. Do they have a card that turns all my cards into water? I mean, it doesn't matter, they're all water anyways. But anyways, you can uh, destroy a water monster your opponent controls and inflict burn damage. But because they have an effect that makes it, it makes its attack go to zero, that doesn't even do anything. <laughs> okay, so they destroy us and we have a full back row. Uh, we have a rollback onto something. Okay, pop off, you to you. They do have some sort of an effect that makes it so he can't respond. Otherwise, it would have acted Wabaku during the battle phase but whatever. We summon out a Paleozoic Diamiscus because Wabaku keeps it alive, and they just surrender. I mean, obviously it could just card destruction, send Elemental Burst, and then uh, copy Elemental Burst with rollback. However, um, I probably would have waited until the next turn because I was able to stall out for a couple turns before I would really get a lot of value off of that um, card destruction. Okay, opponent's deck, what have we got here? Okay, another fish deck very fishy situation. Yeah, I've been having fun with Paleozoics for sure. Um, I'm, I guess I, with only six duels under my belt, I'm not sure if I could say, oh, maybe I should try this in, like, as a complete alternative to Eldritch. Because I will say it has a lot of the same, like, graveyard things where you can abuse rollback onto Karma Cannon or Elemental Burst. And on the field, obviously, you can use Karma Cannon. But I just like that Eldritch has the ability to have Karma Cannon recycle its traps. Um, he has a big indestructible monster that can have a hand effect that targets and sends a card to grave, which makes him an inherent board breaker. Uh, he can do a lot of damage very quickly. Like, a lot of Paleo decks that I looked at as I was building this one rely on things like... Um, Wabaku to keep the game rolling so that you can get your rollback onto Elemental Burst or evenly matched. So it just feels a little bit uh, less, um, I don't know, multi-aspect. Whatever, I don't want to poo-poo -poo -poo on Paleozoic. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Okay. Um, reasoning. Obviously they don't have an Ash Blossom, so they're not going to activate. They're not going to do something to activate Thrust, but I think they did activate a monster effect in the grave. Okay, so there was a frog, laundry, yeah, I don't know about laundry trap, honestly. Like, I keep liking it because it adds cards back to your hand, but because we have other cards like Time Tearing Morganite, it might not be necessary. Also, it has the side effect where you can't activate the cards you add to your hand or any cards with the same name for, like, multiple turns. Okay, they're going to start popping off. We have a Wabaku, so we're just gonna like ignore whatever they do. Like especially, it's especially strong in this event because like not very many decks, or hardly any, like I'm not sure I've seen any, have um, Omni Negates. So you can just battle phase Wabaku and <laughs> start summoning out all of your rank two monsters and there's nothing they can do, goodbye. Oh no, not 500 damage. Elemental Burst, goodbye. 
I will say their burn damage cards are probably a good strategy against Paleozoics. Okay. Yeah, see, I still can't activate Time Terry Morganite because I added it to hand with that uh, Laundry card. Alright, we have some more uh, Link material. Somehow Swap Frog. This is great. So, getting Ronin Totem in the field is uh, huge. And also all of these um, SPs. So we get, um, yep, uh, Marincess, which is going to be able to gain attacks. So we can actually attack them. But here I'm actually going to go to World Sea Dragon Zelantis, banish everything, summon back. Um, I thought during the battle phase you could destroy a number of uh, cards on the field up to those that are co-linked. However, um, I guess being right next to him doesn't count as being co-linked. Okay, so they actually stole my World Sea Dragon Zelantis. But in their deck list, I don't think they have enough generic link monsters, so they don't ever link him off into anything. In this case, I banished uh, Rise to Full Height, which has a similar effect to Wabaku, except you can activate from the grave, where they effectively can't attack you anymore. Okay, so now Ronin Toten. Okay, make uh, the Water Charmer. Here, I definitely should have put it up here so I could steal one of their water monsters. Mistakes made. Okay. Pop. Attack. And I'm just going to chill out here. I have one other Link Monster that I could have made, but, uh... Yeah, I need to... I could get better at playing World Sea Dragon's Atlantis. Or, honestly, I probably should have just stuck with um, the Bubble Reef. Fun stuff, though. Okay, uh, last duel. What do we got? Versus... Um, Magispector? Okay. Majesty something. Yeah, this will be interesting to see what they try to do to play around uh, everything that we've got up our sleeves. Going second. Oh, I have a feeling I know how this is going to end. Oh, I mean, maybe not. I mean, we don't have a reasoning or a grass. We'll have to get them to use a monster effect somehow. Okay, so now the combo player is going to combo, yada yada yada. Yeah, in general, I love decks that are more sort of board breaker faced. Um, I say this every time, but just like, I don't know, it's like hard to read all the cards that they're sub using, and like, okay, yeah, they're doing all this combo stuff, and it's all like, oh yeah, all the only reason I use this card is because it's extra weak material to make this card, which is what's really important. However. Then you have to Pendulum Summon. Okay, so here apparently Pendulum Summoning, they could summon to the zones that they point to from the cards in the extra deck, but then they can also summon from hand. So, yep, a lot of cards. Okay, let me just take a second. What the heck are they doing? Uh, that's some sort of an extender. It does nothing as a Pendulum card, okay. This card is some sort of an extender. Uh, if a monster is tributed, you can detach and special summon. Okay, so that's an extender, but I think they have a way to tribute this turn. Targ one pendulum and one monster opponent controls. Okay, so they have like a compulsory evacuation device, like that uh, trap card. So that's an interruption on a monster. Um, special summon. Uh... Okay, so that, that doesn't do anything that we need to worry about. Uh, your opponent cannot target it with card effects or be destroyed by card effects. Okay. So that's, that, okay, it protects itself. Um, it can be... Yeah, so like, I don't know what this deck, what are they doing? Like maybe a face down card is gonna do something, but they have like the one bounce a card to hand. Reasoning, okay, we got um, an evenly matched in the grave, all we need is a rollback. Talent, okay, Dragon Maid. Okay, so they activate a trap card, which was like a, basically a solemn strike. Okay, if monster is tributed, which allows them to do stuff, they get extensions. They summon them itself. Target a... Okay, so they recycled a card. Whatever. Whatever they did is just they have a bunch of bodies. But you know what else? Uh, what dies to a bunch of bodies? Multiple copies of rollback copy and evenly matched. <laughs> it just banishes everything face down. Like, do we have a ton of follow-up for that? I mean, not really. We have a couple of frogs that might try to do stuff, but... Oh, man. Yeah, I love that. Okay. 
So let's go over the deck list. Um, I basically collected all of the rewards that you get in the um, extra screen. It's just the ones for winning duels now that I have to do. So this is a lot of monsters to run with reasoning. Um, ah, whatever. So we have copies of Laundry Dragon Maid. Honestly, while I'm here, I think I might even drop this and this for a couple copies of Fiend Comedian. Um, like I, in that first duel that you saw, like it was just getting so much value. It was fantastic. Okay, so obviously you have the frog package, which um, swap frog. If you have another frog in your hand, you can special summon himself and then bounce him to a hand and then normal summon himself. Um, whenever you summon him, you can send a frog to grave. First, you want to get Ronin Toad in into grave, which is, uh, is this limited to one? Hmm. Alright, so yeah, there's definitely ways to improve this deck, but I got six a six-game win streak, um, so I'm just gonna, like, leave it there and let you guys do experimenting. This isn't my main deck. Um, okay, so obviously the dupe frog package, most of these cards... Um, if it's sent from the field to the grave, like as link material, then you can add a frog to your hand. The swap frog sends a frog to your grave, usually a dupe frog, which is just banishing fuel for Ronin Toten. And Ronin Toten is the big one, where it constantly summons itself back by banishing all of your dupe frogs and eventually your swap frog. Um, and it's just a way to get a bunch of bodies on the field, get a bunch of level 2s. Uh, Laundry Dragon Maid is another level 2, which goes well with all of our XYZ cards. She also sends the top 3 cards from your deck to the grave. And you can use Dragon Maid Tidying to banish it from the grave, summon out a Laundry Maid, which is awesome if you have a copy of Rise to Full Height also in your grave. I'll talk about why that's important in a second. But it's just another way to get extensions in a level 2 monster that has good value. Feather Duster, you need to have it. We're running... Um, only two copies of Thrust, just because I suspected there wouldn't be as many uh, instances where you need to activate a monster effect. But honestly, having done this a bit, I would probably add a third copy. I don't know, I don't want to do too much um, uh, experimentation here. It's like, uh, it, was, it did its job, it did fantastic in the duels that we had. Card Destruction, I actually got this for free from the... Uh, sort of legacy packs. So I have like four copies of this card, including a shiny one that I like to use when I can. Uh, discard all cards in your hand, draw that many cards. It's fantastic in a deck that likes to mill or get cards in the grave. I could see it being good in Elblitch, but we just run a decent number of other cards we don't want to send to our grave, so I don't think it's worth it for Elblitch, but it's uh, very fun in this deck. If we can use this when we have like four or five cards in your hand, it's uh, gonna do wonders for you. Reasoning, send a bunch of cards from your deck to the grave. We have eight monsters in our um, main deck, which is um, starting to add up. You definitely want to have at least these five as sort of uh, extenders, and I think the Wander Dragon Mink package gets the job done. Um, mills a bunch of traps to your grave. Obviously, all of your Pilizoics come back all the time as extra bodies, extra link fodder, extra XYZ fodder. We have Grass, which is an amazing card. It can be searched off of Triple Tactics Thrust if you resolve Grass. You know, like your opponent will often just surrender the duel because they know that you can roll back forever um, and just continuously copy elements will burst your karma cannon or evenly mash and break their board or prevent them from setting a board up. Uh, it's like the best card in this deck and it's the reason we have it at 60. T uh, Thrust is obviously for searching it. You know it, you love it. Two copies of Tramp Tantalizing Tune. You could probably put this up to three. I only have two copies uh, and it is a uh, ultra rare. Um, obviously Ash Blossom isn't in this event, so any cards you can use that um, would normally get hit with Ash Blossom, you just do not care about at all. Honestly, copies of Called by the Grave feel like they're unnecessary for the same reason, like we don't have to worry about Ash Blossom. But, I mean, there are some annoying cards in there. You could easily drop a couple copies of this for like an extra copy of Thrust and like a third copy of uh, some other card I have limited to two. Um, let's see, Time Tearing Morganite. Um, I have this mostly for like some of my stun decks that I liked to use a while ago. Uh, basically for the rest of the duel you draw two cards instead of one, and you can conduct two normal summons per turn instead of one. Um, if you showed this to someone from like 2002, they'd think it's the most amazing card ever. It's like, oh my god, I'm just gonna like 
Uh, the longer the duel goes, the like more card advantage you get. You get Pot of Greed forever. Um, the issue is obviously duels don't usually last this long. Usually duels are over in like three or four turns. You'd prefer to draw two now as to opposed to drawing an extra card in the future. Um, but, you know, it's uh, great for Paleos because the duels take forever. And let me talk about why they take forever. Um, we have the Cult by the Graves, obviously. Um, uh, there are annoying monsters sometimes you need to deal with. It's just sort of a generic staple that I like to put in. Probably unnecessary for this event, but you could replace it with just a third copy of this or a third copy of that. Wabaku. Okay, Wabaku is essential because oftentimes you'll put like 10 or 15 cards in your grave and you'll have like no cards on your side of the field or maybe like one or two. And your big thing is like you hit them with rollback and then they try to do something and then you flip a Wabaku on your field and your opponent's turn is over, it goes back to your next turn, you draw two with time to Morganite. Morganite. You can uh, use Swap Frog, he can come back to your hand automatically. Um, he can only return to your hand once per turn, but you can normal summon him, return to your hand, and normal summon him again to get a bunch of frogs in the grave to get your sort of Link Fodder or your XYZ Fodder up and running. So Wabaku is uh, really important for this deck. And now having played it a few times, I understand why. I have a couple copies of Magical Hats. It never came up because we, um, I don't know, I only played six duels. But my guess is that if it does come up, it's amazing. It's a similar t idea to something like Wabaku or Rise to Full Height, where you need to protect your life points. So they go to the battle phase, you flip it, you turn one of your face-up monsters upside down, and you grab two traps from your deck, like a rollback and an elemental burst, or if you already have elemental burst, two copies of rollback, something. And at the end of the battle phase, they either destroy all three monsters, or if they don't, the two traps get sent to your grave, and all of a sudden you have a rollback onto an elemental burst to blow up their field if you didn't have it already. So I think it's goofy, it's fun, I have a royal rare. And especially in an event like this, I would absolutely play it. Fiend Comedian, you saw in that first duel, um, you can get a lot of value off of it. You can get like multiple copies of Rollback in the Grave, you can get multiple copies of um, Elemental Burst in the Grave. Sorry, you can get your Elemental Burst and stuff in the Grave if you call the Coin Toss wrong. Obviously, if you call it right, you banish your opponent's entire Grave, which my guess is you're going to be running into um, Paleozoic Mirror Matches a decent amount. And as you saw in our first duel, the Mirror Match against the Paleo player, Feed Comedian was awesome. It really popped off. Elemental Burst is the most amazing transaction rollback target in existence, other than like evenly matched. But obviously, with Elemental Burst, you can copy it with rollback at any time during the draw phase, during the end phase, and destroy all cards your opponent controls. Whereas uh, evenly matched, you can only do it when you currently don't like have any cards or only have one card or something, and you either activate from hand or copy rollback to banish all cards or all but one card, whatever. It's very good, it's an awesome counter, awesome point second card. No, I don't know if any decks even have any Omni Negates, at most they might have one. Elemental Burst is amazing. Uh, yeah, tough said. Balance of Judgment, this is a card that I see a lot of Paleo players use because they do need to generate card advantage. Um, duels last a long time, and um, They'll have cards like Rollback onto Elemental Burst, or an Evenly Matched, or a Karma Cannon that can get you a decent amount of card advantage, but you just need to get cards back, which is more important for this type of deck than it is for, say, Eldritch decks. I've definitely thought about using it for my decks, but um, draw a number of cards. You saw in the first duel, you could draw like five cards, four or five cards, because we only had two cards and they had like six on the field. Very common to use. Um, also, Dionyscus requires a discard, so um, you're able to fill your hand back up. Olenides, um, let's go into just all the Paleos. We are running these um, all at three, basically as a bunch of fodder to make our length twos and um, XYZ level two monsters. Um, Olenides destroys a spell or trap. It's not as important as this event as it is like on the ranked ladder. There aren't as many decks that have just one super important spell or trap that like uh, makes their whole deck go. But you know, it, it's a decent way to get value. You care more about it summoning back from the grave uh, as Link or an XYZ material. Dynamiscus is solid. It has to target a face up card on the field but you get to discard and banish it. If you use rollback to copy Dionyscus, you do still need to discard. There's some cards where you banish it, 
target Dynamiscus, and then you don't have to discard, but in this case, you would discard. Marilla is probably the best card in the deck, mostly because Rollback is the best card in the deck, and Marilla instantly sends it from your deck to the grave. I love using this in Eldritch, for example. Um, Leonchilla um, is a solid card, probably the second best card, just because you can get your banished rollbacks and put them back in the grave. You saw in the flu duel, I used it twice to take the banished elemental bursts and put it back in my graveyard. Oh my gosh, it was amazing. Um, Rise to Full Height is another card that Paleozoic decks really need. Um, when it's on the field, it has an effect to banish it double the defense of one of your monsters. Uh, so that's fine. But mostly you want the graveyard effect, where you banish it, target a monster you, con uh, you control, your opponent has to attack that monster. The feature that um, you need to understand about this, though, is that if you make it so they have to attack one monster, after that they destroy that monster, they don't get to now choose to attack all of your other monsters, or now get to start attacking your life points. Like, that was the only monster they were allowed to attack the entire turn, which makes it effectively a graveyard wabaku. Like, a graveyard you can't um, attack any of our monsters or attack our life points for the rest of this turn. It's a really cool card. Okay, Evenly Mash, we've talked about um, best going second card in the game, even in uh, this event, or especially in this event. Trap Trick is amazing because it can go into anything you need, an evenly matched, um, a rollback, a Leonchilla. So I'm running it at three, probably. Like, the strategic thing is to run cards you can only activate once per turn at two, but I don't know, it's just too good. And at 60 cards, you get away with having more cards at three than maybe you should, because it uh, dilutes the odds of you do drawing duplicates. All right, Dragon Maid Tidy and just one card in the grave. Um, the graveyard effect allowing you to banish and summon a dragon maid is awesome. Obviously, you can use it during your opponent's battle phase, banish it, summon out a dragon maid, and then also banish a rise to full height onto the dragon maid. So you can go from having zero monsters on your field to having one monster that they have to attack, and then once it's gone, then, you know, uh, they can't attack you at all. So also, if they had a bunch of link monsters you summon out, then all of a sudden Karma Cannon's back online. And obviously Dragon Maid still gets you the send top three cards from the deck to the field advantage. Awesome stuff. Ice Dragon's Prison. Um, a lot of decks these in this event are going to be the same type or attribute or whatever, like a lot of Aquas or Sea Serpents. So you can use this to non-targeting banish any particularly important cards in their grave and on their field. Karma Cannon is the best trap that you can set and then activate. It'll end your opponent's turn. You can't use any of the cards that just got flipped over as XYZ material or Link material or Synchro material. Like, you wait till they have three or four monsters on the field that they have been trying to summon. You flip them all face down. It's like all of a sudden you have Shangri Era, like making it so like four other five zones just like are completely unusable. It's way better than Wabaku, because obviously with Wabaku, they could still set up an impenetrable board for you to deal with next turn, whereas uh, Karma Cannon is basically your turn is end over now. Additionally, um, in this event, like there aren't as many decks that have Omni Negates and stuff, so like you wouldn't even necessarily care. You could just have Wabaku anyways, wait for them to do everything on your next turn, you know, roll back onto Evenly or something. Whatever. Cool stuff. Uh, then Transaction Rollback, we already copied, talked about it, like, best card in the deck. Um, Cat Shark, um, we saw this when we were looking at um, our opponent's extra deck. It's basically a way to quick effect detach, target a level 2 XYZ, and double its attack and defense. So this is just a way to deal damage and attack your opponent for game. It's really important because Paleozoic monsters typically have trouble doing that. Um, Paleozoic Amona oh, something. Uh, I haven't made it yet, but I probably should. One thing is it just has a lot more attack, so you use this, and you can also make Cat Shark and, you know, 4800, just attack your opponent and kill them. Unaffected by other monster effects is something that all these Paleos um, have in the extra deck, and also just when they get summoned back from the grave, uh, unaffected by monster effects. But, once per turn, if a trap card is sent from your spell trap zone to the graveyard, it usually gives you, like, you know, activated one. You can look at the top card of your deck. If it's a trap card, add it to your hand. So it's just a way to, you know, get advantage. Most of these cards are trap cards. You're just going to be drawing cards 
once per turn during either player's turn if it has XYZ as material, which is usually because you use like at least one Paleo card. Detach a material, um, target one card in the field, destroy it. So yeah, it's like a pop, it has high attack, it requires three level two monsters, but totally worth it if I need to make it more, honestly. Um, Paleo's Oak Obania, I, you saw in a couple of my duels, I would just make it over and over again. Uh, basically, detach a trap card, um, well, while it has X Y Z, while it has a trap card as X Y Z material, detach one card, and then you can add a Paleo from your hand. So it's a nice searcher. You put it in defense mode to keep your life points alive. It's uh, probably the one that you make the most often, and only requires two level twos. Ninja Mosquito. I definitely should have been making this. Okay, this is a fantastic card. I made this. Um, not to break too much, but I have five cards that I've gotten from Legacy Packs that uh, I can't banish. Uh, this was a, basically a way to one-turn kill your opponent. Like, it um, puts a counter on one of your opponent's cards, and then every time... Uh, okay. Place one hallucination counter on face of monster your opponent controls. Um, all monsters your opponent controls must attack if they can. Sure. Um, cannot be destroyed by battle. So a lot of times you just use this to make Zeus. Um, attack is declared. Okay, every time an attack is declared, so you have like four monsters on your field, right? Like three Paleos or like two Paleos and a Duke Frog or something, plus um, the Ninja. And then um, every time one of those monsters attacks, you can inflict damage to your opponent equal to the attack of one monster with a hallucination counter. So if your monster, if your opponent has a monster with like 5,000 attack and a monster with like 700 in defense mode with like 700 defense or something or whatever, 2,000 defense you have your ninja attack the lower defense monster or lower attack monster whatever you put a hallucination counter on the really big monster with like 5000 attack and then you have your two other monsters attack them uh and each time they attack then you deal 5000 damage so it's a great way to just burn your opponent down and probably kind of a win condition that i needed to take more advantage of okay e pearly beauty once per turn you can target an effect monster your opponent controls to negate the effect um, so it's basically just, um, a way to make, like, an infirm, essentially, or, like, a single monster negate, and it's never gonna be a quick effect, because we never have, a pearly, you know, pearly cards in our deck. It's, like, an interesting aqua level 2 that gets you a negate, but probably not really worth it. Okay, um, Coral Anemone, um, I probably need more copies of this, honestly. Um, yeah, so... Ooh, do I want to get rid of it? Um, so this card is basically... Okay. I wish I had more copies of this. Do with that information what you will. This card is awesome. This card is awesome. Probably could cut these both down to two to make more room for more of these. But this allows you to one turn kill your opponent. It allows you to one turn kill your opponent and negate. This is an extender. You can target a water monster in your grave. Special summon it. We're locked into water for the rest of the turn, but we don't care where everything's already water. Uh, just a way to build up your board again. Uh, the Water Charmer, obviously, is to take a monster from your opponent's grave and summon it out. Um, I also have the Ultra Rare Cambro Raster. It's basically a way to get rid of a trap that your opponent might have. So target a set card in any spell or trap zone, send it to the grave, and if you do, set a Paleozoic directly from your deck. You could also set like a rollback that you have in your hand that you want to get rid of. It's a nice way to like extend and get extra cards in your deck. Um, Shinobi is two monsters with different names, so you can use it with any material, but frankly, so can you. You can do that with any of your like water charmers or princesses, so it doesn't really have value in that way. However, while this card points to an opponent's monster, um, your opponent cannot target this card for attacks. When this monster uh, when a monster this card points to is destroyed, you can special summon an insect from your hand or grave, that doesn't matter. So it's mostly just a way to try to lock your opponent out of summoning. However, even as I'm going through this, <coughs> I'd probably want a second copy of one of these. Uh, like, this extender is awesome to be able to grab your, even like your extra deck monsters that are water. Okay, so I guess you could have used Shinobi to grab your ninja. All right, take, a, take it with a grain of salt. You know, this is up to you. It's just an event that's quick and makes stuff. But um, I think that these cards are were a lot more valuable. And obviously, your big boys, you have your Bubble Reef, which is a level four. You can um, banish a water monster to draw a card to each standby phase. 
um, each time a monster is banished face up, it can um, gain 600 attack, so that's how it gains attack each standby phase. And um, you can send a water monster from your hand to the graveyard to special summon a banished Marincis monster. So I think this uh, Coral Anemone is probably the only one you would really be summoning out, but it's a cool card. It's a good way to get a lot of attack to kill your opponent. And obviously we have World Sea Dragon's Lantis, which is an absolute staple. I feel like three of all water decks are going to have this. Um, you can use it using a single um, level four monster if you want. So you could make this and have it for a turn or two. And then we want to just absolutely annihilate your opponent. You link this into this. And then during the main phase, banish a bunch of monsters and then summon them back. And you can put all your opponent's monsters in face down defense mode. And you can put all of your monsters linked up in a way so that you have as many co-linked monsters as possible. And then during the battle phase, you can destroy cards in the field up to the number that are co-linked. Um, I definitely need a little bit more practice with making sure that I have as many monsters co-linked as possible instead of just being in zones that the link arrows point to. Alright, overall, I mean, obviously you can probably tell from this I'm not an expert at Paleozoics, but I had a lot of fun. I feel like this is a solid baseline. I did go through a number of iterations of, like, reading what other people's decks were and what comments people were suggesting about how to improve those versions of the decks. Um, obviously this deck had a ton of success, right? I won six games in a row, and you can judge for yourself whether that was based on my skill or just the pure power of this deck. I had a lot of fun in this event. I'll probably play a couple more games. Uh, I want to post this video early, so that's also the reason why it's not maybe as refined as it could be, because I know a lot of people just want to get into the uh, XYZ Festival as soon as possible. Things to look forward to in the future. Um, I'm going to be getting my... Probably the next video I'm going to release might not come out for like a week or more, and it'll be my Master 1, like, best possible Eldritch deck available. Like, after doing a lot of experimenting, seeing what wins, what loses, uh, just trying to do something that will be really strong and hopefully remain strong for a while. And then after that, I'll get to sort of, like, more fun decks and things like that. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.